Hello, my name's Dave, and today we'll be making a web API using Go and the popular web framework Jin. Let's get started. So the first thing you want to do, make a folder, and we're going to call this folder News Feeder. And as the name suggests, it's going to be an app that helps people post news items and read news items. It's just a news feed. Open it up with your favorite editor. In my case, that's Visual Studio Code, but there are plenty of editors available. Uh, we have Goland, Vim, <laughs> take your pick. Cool. We're going to make a main.go with a package called main and a function called main init. Great. Now, the first thing you want to do when starting a Go project, actually, technically, before you make the main Go, is set up the module. And the way you do that is you open up your terminal, you you hold on let me figure out the combination so you jump into the folder that you're you're working with and in my case it's the news feeder folder and you run a function you run a command called go mod init and the name of the project now in my case it's news feeder great now what this is going to do is it's going to create an index file it's called a, a, mo a mod file and this mod file if you've used node is like your package lock sorry it's like your package json um, and it contains an inventory of all of your dependencies also it allows your uh, go compiler to know where your project is indexed with where the root folder of your project is and in our case it's going to be here next to this main go now the first thing we want to do after that is just make sure it all works we good let's have a look now if we run go run main.go, we good. That's great. Now what I like to do here is create a make file. And in that make file, I usually have a rule called div. If for those of you that are, that are unfamiliar, um, make is an old GNU tool. And it's sort of like the, if you've used, again, the node example, if you use node uh, in your package, JSON, you've got those uh, scripts. This is kind of the same thing. It allows you to run scripts um, using commands. So uh, the command we're going to run on dev will be go run main.go. And if we jump into our terminal, type in make dev, it'll run it doing the same thing as before. Fantastic. Okay. Now, Jin, what's that about? Let's uh, open up a browser. And let me just grab a window. All right, so if we go to GitHub, actually just go to Google. If you go to Google and type in <laughs> go gin, it will pop up with this um, Git repo. And in this Git repo contains gin. Now gin is a web framework. I'm gonna tie this a lot to Node um, because it's a familiar place for a lot of developers. And uh, so Jin is basically Express for Go, um, if you've used the Express framework in Node. Um, you could consider it Flask for Python if you're coming from a Python backend uh, background or probably difficult to make any parallels in languages that I'm unfamiliar with here. But essentially it's, um, it's a routing solution that includes things like a JSON marshaller, JSON unmarshalling, um, like a, a like grabs parameters from your URL, it'll do all the convenience things that you would like to see have, or like like to have out of um, like an HTTP router. So how do we do the installation? We copy this go get command. Obviously just pretty much follow the instructions here. You go get gin. Now it's gonna grab all these dependencies and it is going to add them to our go mod file. We've only, we personally in this project, we only need the, the gin um, dependency, but it depends on all these other packages. So it obviously imports them with that. And this is the package lock type concept where it's, um, it's a sum, like it sort of verifies that all the projects, all the dependencies are as um, that they match their signatures. Cool. Now let's, uh, let's proceed. Let's create and this um, basic project. So what does this basic project look like? It's, um, it is, a 
is composed of three main blocks. We've got this um, default statement, we declare a route, and then we run the project, or we run the router. So what does this all mean? Gin, you can create a new gin, so gin.new, and that's gonna create a new instance of gin. This gin.default is creating a new gin, except it attaches some middleware. Um, there's a logger, there's some recovery middleware. The recovery middleware essentially catches an endpoint should it panic, and the logger just provides convenient logs to the to the console. And I actually quite like the aesthetic of these logs. They've got coloring and it's pretty cool. And what we have is a reference to this gin logger, oh, sorry, this gin um, router. And on the router, we declare these routes. We have a get request here, which is on the ping endpoint, and it executes this function when it's hit. It's passed this gen context, and using the gen context, we're able to respond to the incoming request. And normally, the application would just sort of die. This run here prevents that from happening. It stops the application from conclu concluding, and it starts up the router and makes sure that these endpoints are all listening and waiting for requests. Great. Let's uh, let's run this and see what what it all looks like. So if we go make dev. It spins up the server. It, you can see here that it's declared that there's a get request on ping and it points this function here. And if we open up our browser and we navigate to, <laughs> whoops, and we navigate to, here it is. And we go to localhost 8080 because that is the default port. It's going to say nothing because the endpoint is slash ping, slash ping, and it responds with this pong message. That's cool. Great. So let's continue. Now that we've done that, we're actually going to want to start building out the application and actually make it do stuff. And in order to do that, we need to sort of have a structure in mind. And a, a pattern that I quite like to follow is I will create an HTTPD folder. Sometimes I'll actually create a CMD folder. Sorry, let me just get out of this mode. Sometimes I'll create a CMD folder and inside of that CMD folder, I'll create an HTTPD folder and I'll also create like a Lambda folder and sometimes I'll create like a CLI folder and these will just be entry points to my application but because we're just making a web server here, I can just remove this and we can just say HTTPD and this is gonna contain our actual HTTP server. Our service is gonna live here, and it'll be the orchestrator for the underlying functionality. I like to have a folder here called handler, and it contains a package obviously called handler, and that handler package is where I'll keep all of my individual endpoints. As, pro as projects grow in size, you can kind of pull this out into multiple different um, folders, or if, if it's getting really big, you might want to consider a different architecture, potentially looking at microservicing or possibly some sort of better management solution. But so far, I haven't really seen, I haven't really come across a point where I've struggled with this pattern, but maybe there'll be a day. For now, I like to use this naming convention. I'll say the route name, it's usually in dash case and then I'll underscore, and then the method name. It's just a pattern that I like. Um, you can name it however you'd like to. The reason why I like this is it kind of gives me an indication in the tab up above. It's a bit more practical. Um, I can just read it and see and know exactly where I'm at. We are in the handler package. We want to create a function, and the function I'm going to call it ping get, and it is going to take a gin context and it's going to not return anything, it doesn't need to return. Uh, it's going to do a JSON with an H HTTP dot status OK and it's going to have a response which is a map with a str string string. For those of you from a JavaScript background a map of string of string is essentially an object literal 
where the key is a string and the value is a string. So essentially this. Um, and from a, from a Python background, you're probably looking at dictionaries. That's, that's essentially what this is. And we're just gonna create a hello found me. Great, so that's this. That's this endpoint, and up here, we're now going to remove the original one, and we're going to say handler dot ping get. And what we're doing is declaring that this function will be executed when this endpoint occurs. Now, if we restart this, it'll say main dot go no such file directory, and the reason for that is I've moved the file, the folder where main.go lives, it now lives under httpd. Run it again, and we'll see that everything's running. And if we, huh, I really like closing those windows. I promise I'll keep this one open. Uh, if we go to localhost 8080, again, slash ping, we're going to hit this endpoint, hello found me. Great, now I'm gonna stash this over here for later. Okay, cool, so what's the next step from here? One thing I like to do with these, these endpoints is I like to return a function, an anonymous function, and that anonymous function takes the gin context and this function will return a gin handler func. The difference here now is you must execute the function in order to obtain its return value. And the reason why I like to do this is I can pass dependencies into the ping get function and it's sort of available in this closure, which is quite nice. It's really, really good for testing. I'll, I'll demonstrate how that works later and I'll show you the value there. Great, so the next step here would be, this is a news feed type software. And what we wanna do with this is ensure that people can add news feed items and they can view all of the news feed items. I'm not gonna worry about accounts or anything like that. And also I'm not gonna be integrating this with a database or any sort of permanent data storage or third party solution that will help with that. I'm just gonna use a slice and I'm gonna leave it in memory to keep this as simple as possible. Now, to achieve this, I usually create a folder called platform, and this will be where I keep all of my project-specific dependencies. Anything that spans multiple projects, say I create um, a package like, that does something like string obfuscation, or uh, you know anything with um, very general functionality that I often use between different services, uh, I will take them out of this platform folder, and I will promote them to say GitHub or some sort of central repository where I can use it in multiple projects. But for project specific dependencies, I like to keep them in this platform folder. And in our case, we're going to have the news feed package inside of platform, newsfeed.go, package newsfeed. Great. Now package newsfeed, it's going to have a type. We're going to have a newsfeed item and it's going to be a struct and it's going to contain a title and it's going to contain a post we can add other properties to it like date and stuff but we're not going to worry about that we're going to give it some json bindings title which is some, some uh, metadata to help marshal it between this um, struct type and the json, JSON type now we're going to want to make a newsfeed list. So type, let's call it repo, type repo. And it's also going to be a struct. Now the repo struct is going to contain items, which is a slice of item. A slice of item. Now we'll create a function, call it new, and this new function is going to return a pointer to a repo, return 
and repo. Now the repo, I'm going to create a function receiving a pointer to a repo. Uh, and we're going to call it add. And add is going to simply add an item to the list of items. So what we need it to do is take a item and it will take the r dot items and say that it equals to append r dot items and the item itself. So we're going to just simply replace, we're going to append items to this array, or sorry, the slice every time this add function is called. Then we have another method, which we're going to call get all and it will return a slice of items and they will be the value of these items. Great. Obviously there's a lot of tech debt with these comments, but that's okay. We'll leave that for later <laughs> for when this video is off finished. And this effectively describes the, you know, the data structure that we'll be using this, this repository for everything. Now I'm just going to remove the HTTP service part of this. And we're just going to, in isolation, make sure that our um, newsfeed is working. How do we do that? Now let's create a news, well, let's just call it feed equals newsfeed dot new. Now we have this newsfeed being imported. If we go FMT dot print, what we'll see on the feed is probably nothing at this point but we want to say feed dot add and we're going to add a newsfeed dot item and in this item we'll just add a couple of values so this is the title hello how you doing mate then we will print it again and with any luck we'll see that result so let's Clear that and say make dev. Now we see the the news feed is empty, and then after our ad gets run, we have this hello, how you doing? Getting run. Cool. So we can see that our news feed is working. But what I would like to do is take this a little bit further and actually add some tests to this. So let's go newsfeed underscore test dot go. And here we've got package newsfeed. We're going to have a function and this function is going to be, we're going to test each of these individually, but really we're just going to test two things. We're going to test add and get all. The rest is kind of implicitly tested. I guess you can't really test these, but you know, you get what I'm saying. Um, so I call it test add and another func called test get all. And I can't, I can never really remember what this is, but it's like T and then testing. Oh, let me just double check. I've got it. I've got a reference somewhere else. I'll just dig up an old project. Just remember what type it is. Obviously, I don't test enough if I don't remember this, but that's okay. We have got. Here we go. Nice, nice. Mm, this is some terrible code from a long time ago. Pay no attention to the testing behind the curtain. And we have these two functions. Great. Hold on. Okay, cool. So let's quickly test this add. And how do we test it? How do we know that something's been added? What we'll do, we'll create a new feed. So new feed equals new. Then we'll say feed dot add and we're going to add an item in this case we'll say the item is an item with body cool and here we're going to do the actual assertion we're going to say if feed dot items no oh yeah it's capital that's right if feed dot items zero Well, firstly, let's just check. Let's just check if, um, you know what? We don't even need to add a value to it. We don't need to add titles or anything. We just see if an item was added at all. 
So we can say if length of length of feed items equals equals zero, then we have a problem. Ah, whoops. Error item was not added. Error F. Cool, and let's say get all. So we want to see that it's getting everything. Oh, what's wrong here? Undefined. Cool, and so same kind of deal. We want to create a new feed. We want to add an item to the feed. We'll give this one some text, or we don't really need to do that. Now we can say um, uh, obtained. Oh, we just got results. How about that? Results. And the results will just be a feed dot get all. And same kind of question here, which can say if the length of the results equals zero, then obviously we didn't get the results. Or we didn't get all the results. It should equal it should equal one actually, really. If the results do not equal one, and again if the results do not equal one. Cool. Now let's test it. How does how does testing work? We've written these pretty straightforward tests. We can say um, go test, and then we'll say platform platform newsfeed, and it says okay. What I like to do is usually I just do a dot dot dot. I think it's this way, or it could be the other way. Hold on, I've got a, I've got my reference. One sec, as I check my other make file. Yes, it's um, dot slash dot dot dot, which will test everything. And also we can do something cool, which is dash cover, and it will provide the coverage for the testing. So we can see that in our newsfeed package, we're covering 100% of statements with our testing. Okay, moving right along then. So we've got some testing, we've got some you know data stuff. Now let's add stuff from our endpoints. Now back at our main.go, we have this ping, everything's good to go. Let's create some endpoints. We're gonna create a, a news feed underscore get.go and we wanna add a news feed underscore post.go. And let's just copy this boilerplate because I don't really want to type it out again. And we want to do news feed get. And we're going to do news feed post. I think I've made news feed a single word, so I'll just keep it lowercase. Feels wrong, but that's okay. I think I've misspelled it. That's all right. So we're going to have a get news feed and we want to post news feed news feed get news feed post. And this guy is a post. Great. So now we have these two endpoints and what do we want to do there? Well, firstly, we want to get all of the news feed in this case, and in the other one, we want to add an item to it. Now, how do we get the data that comes in from this repository? How do we put it into these handlers? I mean, we could we could declare it globally, right? I guess, and then have or like have it appear via global scope, possibly, or we could do something weird like. Um, we can create some bootstrapping logic elsewhere, like create some bootstrappers and have them return like singleton values or, or something like that. Um, my personal preference is I like to simply declare the dependency here in my um, main go, where I would create a newsfeed.new. It's gonna say it's not being used. And then I would like, I usually just pass it into the places that, that are using it. So in this case, we've got newsfeed get, newsfeed post. They both, obviously not taking it just yet, but I will pass in a feed of type newsfeed 
dot item. Oh, so I think it's a new speed list. Have I mistaken something? I uh, perhaps this just doesn't automatically import it. No, okay, something something's up. What's up? Mm, oh, let's see. Have I named something weird? Ah, I've named it a newsfeed repo. Fancy, cool. And same deal here. So these both take these um, newsfeed repos, and they're generated when the application bootstraps when the application itself loads these dependencies are created typically I'll do the same thing with a database I'd create I'd establish my database connection and then I'd have sort of my DB variable here which I'd then pass into the functions that require database access um, I'll do the same thing for like anything that, that that was a shared dependency and it's typically only things that are shared dependencies that I would do at this level something that's that needs to be kind of at that global level Cool. So we pass in the feed, and this is our get. And what do we want to do with that? What we want to do is get the results. We'll get the results, and the results are going to be made up of the feed dot get all. Now we pass in this get all, and it's going to return. It's going to create this response, this JSON response, and it's going to be made up of these results. And on the other side, we've got this post. Now the post is a little bit more complicated because we obviously need to take a body, a request body. And to do that, the first thing we want to do is declare what the what the response is going to look like, or sorry, what the request is going to look like. And I typically just use the name of the method of the um, the function which I use to, de to define the method and say that plus request title post this has the same signature as the newsfeed item but that's okay sometimes it might be sometimes it might not we're going to annotate this with some information to tell the marshal marshalling system where to find the properties and how to map them to these values okay cool so we've got this request struct, which we've defined. Now in the request itself, what we're gonna do is say, we're going to create this newsfeed post. So I'm gonna say um, request, request body. And the request body is a is one of these guys, a new one of them. Now c.bind, this is a method available in the, um, here it is in gin, so if we go to the gin, yeah, cool. If we go to the gin documentation, we can look up post. I'm sure the word post must appear in this. Oh, I see, it's not even the documentation. Cool, 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 that's fine. Uh Huh. There should be some documentation somewhere around here. Well, we can see example. Oh, all documentation is available in these languages. Hectic. And from here, we can probably dig up like how to deal with post information. Anyways, you use this bind method to bind your request body to the incoming request. Essentially what it's doing is saying, um, I'm creating, I create the struct. Now it's got these two properties and bind the incoming request, the properties in the incoming request, try to map them and, and bind them to the values in the, in the struct. If they, if there are more values in the request than they are on the struct, they'll be ignored. If there are less, these will be set to their zero values, which are in this case, string and, and post. Okay, so we've we've bound this request body. Now what we want to do is add the newsfeed item. And how do we do that? Firstly, we want, we need to create a item. And what's an item made of? It's a newsfeed.item and it's 
title is going to be the request body dot title and its post is going to be the request request body dot post. Now we've created this item. The next thing we want to do is say feed dot add add this item to the feed. And down here we want to return something just to say that it, that it happened. So I'm going to return a status. I'm not going to worry about a body and the status code is going to be no content. So this will return a 204 response, which is, yeah, it means that there's no body, but all is well. Good job. Cool. So that's my uh, newsfeed post endpoint. Great. Let's, let's have a look. Let's see what this looks like running. Now, if we go make dev, it runs. We have the service running. Now let's check out, oh, here it is. Let's check out newsfeed. Newsfeed says null. Now, why does it say null? The reason it's saying null is because when we create a newsfeed item, when we, when we create a repo, it doesn't instantiate any items inside of this list. So what I actually have to do is manually declare the items inside of the constructor function for the repo. Now, when I restart this and come back to it, refresh, we have an empty array. I'll just zoom this in a little bit so that it's a little bit more readable. Cool. Now let's test the post. I guess that's pretty much the next step. Now, if we open up the inspector, I'm just going to quickly do some JavaScript, await, fetch. And the endpoint we created was news feed. The method is a post. The headers, we have, whoops, we have one header and that header is content type. And the value is, oh no application slash json and the body the body is a stringified javascript object and the object has two properties it's got a title and it has a post and the title is hello and the post is world Cool, now we get a 204 status response. If we take a look at the logs, we can see that we've had a, a post request to newsfeed. Let's just expand this because it's kind of ugly. We've got a post request to newsfeed and it's given us a 204. If we re refresh this page, we can see that we now have one result. Hello world. Now, if we do that multiple times, we can see multiple entries. So it seems to be like everything is now adding and we have this the service now that's running it's adding items to this this repository which is sweet great now the only thing left to do to improve this is to start using interfaces on the on the um function parameters for these news feed gets and news feed post functions now how do we do that now in my news feed package i'm going to define two interfaces type getter interface and it's going to have one method called get all and we're going to define another one called adder interface and it's going to have a single method on it called add now the getter has a signature where it where its method of get all will return an a slice of items and the adder will simply take one item. Now these interfaces, they, you can use these as function parameters. And we're gonna do that here in the uh, newsfeed items. So what we say is we have a feed. Now the feed is no longer going to be a type of pointer to a repo. Instead, what we're gonna do is it's going to be a newsfeed getter. Now, how does this work? Because this function is only ever using this get all function or this get all method on the feed, 
and this interface it describes itself as having only have as only having one method and that method is this get all method returning um, a slice of items then feed having only that one method is usable in this context because we are only ever using feed to use it for its uh, get all method now it doesn't explain this interface doesn't explain anything about its behavior like we're not talking about how it creates anything but what we are doing is defining what it does and because the feed itself being passed in as a parameter it satisfies the requirements for this interface that requirement being it just needs a method on it that does get all and returns a slice of items because it's, it's, it satisfies that signature the compiler won't throw any errors it'll say this is a valid input for this function good to go and the same thing we'll do on the other side here with the, the post we'll say we will remove the um, pointer to a newsfeed repo and we'll change it to a newsfeed adder and because again we're only using the add method in this function we have this adder now a really cool thing about this is let's say today I have this um, I'm using this in-memory database to store my newsfeed items the, sig the only thing that these two functions, these get and post functions, the only thing they care about is that the thing that they're, they're being passed in matches the signature of these interfaces, that they have a get all and an add. Then let's say tomorrow I decide, hey, look, you know what? I'm going to implement DynamoDB or I'm going to implement PostgreSQL or something else. Suddenly I can implement those, those technologies and as long as the inputs that I provide to these functions still satisfy these same interfaces, the underlying mechanism by which I use to store my items, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to these, to these functions. They just take a generic interface and those interfaces define what the, the function requires in order to be satisfied. Cool. Another cool thing about these interfaces is they provide us with the capability of simply mocking the dependencies. So rather than so that same example where I would say, um, let's say I built this from the beginning using um, MySQL. And in order for me to test this function, this handler function, I would actually need to spin up a, you know, an instance of MySQL. I'd need to sit, populate it with some data. Then I'd have to start doing some testing based on that, that preceded data. What interfaces allow me to do in this case is I can actually, rather than using the MySQL database, I can just use an in-memory replacement like this newsfeed thing that I've already made. I can, because it satisfies these um, interfaces, these interface signatures, because it matches them, I'll be able to use a drop-in in-memory replacement and use that as my mock for the database being provided as a um, function parameter. So that's another power of, of using interfaces in the context of this sort of thing. Cool. Um, thanks, thanks for sitting around and, and listening and, and hearing what I have to say about Go. I hope it was useful. If it wasn't, that's cool. If it was, great. If you have anything you want to add, please feel free to leave a comment. Um, if you saw something you, you thought I could improve on, please uh, feel free. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, in addition, if you want me to do any videos on any particular subjects, feel free to ask as well. I'm going to extend this in the future with another subject or with another video talking about how to integrate React with this and then possibly another video how to integrate Angular with this and maybe even one on just integrating native web components without any framework whatsoever. Um, but going on, let me know what you want to see and uh, thanks. Peace.